So I thought I'd give you a little walk around of the shed. And uh, before I do, I'm going to explain a little bit about why it is the way it is. Let's have a look. It's kind of about the view of the mountains and the gutter, but it's also, it was all dictated by the height of the garden wall and the tiles had to be a minimum angle of 14 degrees. So that's as far wide as it could be. I didn't want a pitch roof because when you're on the other side of the wall, I didn't want anybody to see it. So that's the way why it's that design. Now, let's go downstairs and I'll show you it in more detail. So here it is. Originally, I was going to put the doors in the middle, seemed logical. And I thought, hang on a minute, if I put them to the left a bit more, I can get the pickup truck in because that door on the right has to be able to open at least 90 degrees and it wouldn't have done otherwise. So that pitch was also designed so that I could get logs underneath and there'd be an overhang. Turned out that 14 degrees <laughs> actually was supposed to be 28 degrees. So I had all sorts of issues with leaking roof and it all had to come up, off again. But I'll tell you about that later. So you can't really see how pretty it is because of all the logs stacked in front but that is something that will keep you warm this winter. I'm going to show you where the materials came from before I show you inside. So let's go to another part. So here we are at this. This is where all the materials came from. And this was an old barn built back in the day of local materials. It's all cob bricks, mud bricks. And oak must have been so plentiful then because even this box was made of it. And so I wanted to use these bricks. I wanted to use this beam. Look at the size of this beam. It's over five meters long, but I couldn't lift it. And there was every, just, oak was so readily available. It's everywhere. So, and this place just dilapidated, falling down. And it, on the one hand, it felt sacrilegious to pull it apart, but I was saving it. I was restoring it. I was resurrecting it. I was giving it new life. And the other thing, there's still, I don't know if you can see in here whether it's too dark. Look at those beams. And it's all held together with nails, trying to get the nails out with a crowbar. It's impossible. And the other thing they do is um, they have stone roofs, just flagstone plotch it's called. And God knows how they got it up there. Look at the size of it. I mean, this is my foot for scale. Just looking at it hurts. It's so unbelievably heavy. Anyway, a lot of scavenging was done from here to build the shed. Um, for, for a few reasons, obviously for cost, I didn't have to buy materials, but also because it was so beautiful and I wanted to put new life into it. Right, now I'm going to show you the shed. Okay, let's go inside. I got given the doors before I'd even had the base down. The, the base was a big deal because the cement mix had to come and the digger had to come and dig it all out. So that's... Oh, it didn't go all the way, but it kind of locks open. So this is the bike storage area. Unfortunately, it's a bit messy here because I bought the last stuff from the old shed and I haven't got a place for it yet. And... Um, the doors, as you may have noticed, don't go all the way to the ground because I needed this height so I'd get the pickup truck in there. So these are the walls resurrected and, and put back here with the bricks. And I wanted windows and I was going to use those glass bricks and I thought, well, I've got a lot of whiskey bottles. So that was whiskey bottle attempt, window attempt one. And then I got a bit more, <laughs> a bit more ambitious. But these bricks are so heavy and so thick. I think they're going to be great heat insulation. And these oak panels too. Being, being from England, I just thought they were like the fence panels. They were super thin. But no, they're nearly an inch thick. And uh, <clears throat> so I got them. And this beam, I didn't really want a beam. I didn't really want a support in the middle of the shed. Uh, but I just, the tiles are so heavy. Something had to be done. And I put this beam up by myself. I got this edge in here. And then with a jack, got this and put it up here. So yeah, it's actually not that inconvenient. If I'd have got that big five meter beam I showed you earlier, I wouldn't have needed that support. Unfortunately, because of the angle, there's no loft. I've got some storage up there, 
for panniers and stuff. But I'm, I'm unfortunately lost. This is the KLR engine shrine. <laughs> Because there's little, there are little bits all around the wall. There's these little sort of arches. And I thought, well, what can I do with that? KLR engine fitted in there just, that's a, that's a long way to lift an engine. <laughs> and, uh, and then this is kind of my, my goalpost, I call it. I did that to support the, uh, the cross sections. I, I got some, some quite nasty uh, comments as I was building the shed from people on Facebook saying, oh, you know, <laughs> wouldn't do it like that. It's like, well, it's not your shed. And, and, and the mantra over and over again was, it's just a shed. So as long as it's structurally sound, doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay, so that's the bike storage. Let's go into the workshop. This door, by the way, is from the old shed. And so I had to make this aperture exactly the right size because I wanted to keep my door. And you'll see why, because all my memorabilia's on the other side. Welcome into the workshop. Very insulated, very warm. Had a lot of problems with water coming through because when they dug it out, the bottom of this wall now is below the road, the other side. So as water came through, so when we had to do a French drain, which was an, unex <laughs> an unnecessary and unexpected, well, it wasn't necessary, but an unexpected expense. So yeah, that's my door, see? And I mean, for years, these are like, they're, all these license plates and number plates all mean something. They all have some relevance. And, and that poster, I mean, I've had that poster in my bedroom also, that's probably 10 Easy Rides posters, influenced so much by it, Dennis Hopper and his chopper. And I, and I think that's why, so there you are with your pan ed chop with ape hangers, Captain America. And, and, and really, 25 years ago, you know, I built this Harley, okay, shovel head bottom end, but pan ed with the apes. So, but, but somewhat, somewhat better brakes <laughs> than, uh, than Captain America had. But yeah, heavily influenced and uh, by that. Yeah, see his brakes? He doesn't have any. Um, so again, I've always wanted a house with exposed beams, never got it, but I do have a shed with it, but trying to put that plasterboard up in between, because there's nothing straight. I mean, this, these, these are my levels. Barely used them, <laughs> barely used them. So again, because it's so high at this end, there's a lot of, lot of, um, there's a, there's a lot of uh, storage up there. And these are all sort of projects that nothing's got done for a year. The Ducat is going to get a twin headlight fairing. The, I've got plans for the tank for the T140. Uh, but that will happen later. So we've seen the Kawasaki Shrine. This is the, uh, the Lemmy Shrine. And, uh, and then I've got my log burner in here. This came out the last year. This shed is almost exact replica of the last one. I thought I'd try and get Mongolian on the doors. Then it looked a bit sort of mod. And now I don't know if I like it at all. And my, my big treat to myself after, <laughs> after, I don't know, 40 years of kneeling on a snap-on kneeling pad, I now have a lift. So I don't have to kneel anymore. Uh, so uh, everything came out of the old shed. The bench and the, the vice came from England, actually. Dropped that vice on my foot once. I had to go to hospital. And... Uh, and this, which you wouldn't want to drop on your foot, came out of the old shed. It's a stone sink. And it, someone carved it out of stone. This is wonderful old Bulgarian stuff. And the last one was, uh, the, when it was located in the last shed, it had a brick support. And I thought, I bet I can find bits of oak. So I found bits of oak to support it. And so, yeah, it got water. Uh, and then still having some durable balls left and wanting some light, I made a, and getting into my cob mud walls, I did this with my, and there was surprisingly quite a lot of uh, empty whiskey bottles laying around. So it wasn't difficult finding materials. And it was so, it was such a lovely thing to go next door and just write, I need a bit of, a bit of wool, what can I find? And using all this stuff. And ultimately it was about the view. I don't know if you can see, uh, there's no snow on them yet, but I got this mountain view for when I sit on my seat and look out. And another thing, when the sun shines, it always casts a shadow across here. So wherever I put my beer, I can always find a shadow to put it in, which wasn't built into design, but very worked really well. So this is the workshop area. To be honest, not much work motorcycle maintenance has gone on in here yet. It's only just reached a finishing point. 
because what happens in the next bit is what I pretentiously call my studio. This is a recording booth, which I bought from the last place. The tribal design didn't really work because I took it off in panels. It's, it's, it's really tight, right? Okay, so the door only opens to there. So I have to squeeze into this bit and then open the door and then squeeze into the studio. I don't know if you can tell on the mic, but when I close the door, listen. Very, very quiet. So I sit on my stool and the computer sits out, out there. And then this is where I have my script and do my audio book. And I, I've just completed doing the last one. I put, put duct tape on the light because it was too bright, but heavily insulated. So this is my recording booth. Let's go back out. Like I say, it's, it's really tight to get in and out. No fat people allowed. So, this is the studio and these oak floors boards were just in the barn. They're so thick and, and heavy. <laughs> so uh, I used some of these, what I had for my floor. So heavy oak theme, Jura aged in oak. And uh, and then that's the sort of tribal design of the of the recording booth, and and the back side of the Jura wall, and the the beams that I used, I just just had enough room to squeeze the light in there. I'm going to turn that the LED off now, and you can sort of see a bit better how this thing was constructed, again with with internal. Um, the turn wall, even the external walls are all cob brick. Very low door. And uh, so when I sit at my writing desk, oh, what's this? Uh huh, the new book, which will be out at the end of this week. So people who have pre ordered it are going, to, uh, are going to get it before the official launch at Motorcycle Live. And then that's the script that I read from. And they're the mistakes that I made. So when I sit here, Again, I have my mountain view. And what do I write about? The road. And the journey. Nothing happens by accident in this shed. I even made my little mud wood holders. So that's the shed. I could go on and on and on about it. It's been a huge, huge project, much like the trilogy. So mind your head, it's a very low door. And outside, <laughs> leftovers. And you can probably guess what that corner's used for. There we have it. And um, I just, I, I could, I've got so many photos of construction. I thought, should I do a photo video or should I just do a walk around? I thought, I'll just do a walk around. Um, so there you have it. I hope you like the walk around of my shed. Um, it isn't as impressive as it could be because not all the, all the bikes are in because I've got to get the pickup in. But for now, it's pretty good. What I'm going to attempt to do now is a commentary over some of the photos. They're all going to last for about three seconds, not this one. Um, this is where I got the walls from, from the old shed, the old barn next door and I've got to try and coincide the commentary with the photos and then line it up on the video. Let's see if it works. So there we are building up the wall so it was all one level. Oh God, I've got to be quicker. Um, you can see all the dirt that came out. Oh, this is too quick. And there's the cement coming out and there's, <laughs> there's the bricks that we pulled out and the, we took all the tiles off that roof that we used. The framework just begins and um, and then, you know, the, wood, the, the walls got put in place. That was the comment, that, that was the picture that all the negative comments on Facebook. But it was so good to have some walls up. There I am putting up the beam all by myself. These are the cob bricks, really heavy. And they were getting put in place within that wall again. The only time I used a level was uh, for the window. We had a lot of rain and um, it kept the grass green. But I was so anxious to get a roof on so I could keep tools in there. And there's the mud walls being put in 
and uh, see it was full blown summer there. And this is the last bit. This is the studio being built. As you can see, oak everywhere. And uh, you can probably pause this if you want to. I got the truck in, the truck fits. And then when I stained it, it just was such good contrast. It looked fabulous. Look at that. And so moving on to the last bit now, the workshop. Oh, and then of course we had to do the big French drain because of all the water that came in. That was a huge expense, a lot of work, horrible job getting the digger in. That's the door from the old shed. And there it is in place in the new shed. Making the Jura window, very muddy work, but worth the effort. And I really enjoyed doing it actually. All the, uh, all the tiles from the last shed put in, into the new shed was like a jigsaw piece because they'd all been cut for the last shed. So that was a bit of a bugger. Um, it's still not really finished yet. And then moving on to another whiskey window. It's this great muddy fun doing this stuff. And uh, you know, keep going back day after day and just making it a little bit better, run your finger around it. So there we are, the Jura window. That was putting the gypsum uh, carton on the drywall up, horrible job. And then all the roof had to come off again because it leaked and we put wood on it and uh, all the way across to give it a proper lining. And then this is aluminium, thin, thin sheets of aluminium that you use. They use for printing books, which is kind of appropriate. And then put all the tiles back on. That's the aluminium. You see, it's, uh, that's what they print books with. And then putting down the beams, putting in the pechka, the, the log burner putting down the floor with insulation underneath that can, and then the, that's so heavy using a ratchet strap to pull it up off the trolley onto the table and then onto its position the stone sink in position oh that was the crate that the bike lift came in which I used in construction that's what it's all about the view the view so there you go that's it that's pretty much um, the shed in short photos and a quick commentary and of course the view inside is pretty damn good too and it ends with the KLR engine. <laughs> Thanks for watching.